it comes to vaccinating, Israel is the world champion. No other country has inoculated more of its people. Life can be good once you've had the jab. A different story in the Israeli-occupied Palestinian territories. The first donor shipments have only just arrived from COVAX. And infection rates are especially high in the poor and densely populated parts of the West Bank and Gaza. But like anywhere in the world, there's skepticism. One official says thousands of Gazans have failed to turn up for their vaccine, preferring to wait and see. The Palestinian laborers who work in Israel have been getting the jab, as DW's Tanya Kramer reports. A vaccination center at an Israeli checkpoint between the West Bank town of Bethlehem and Jerusalem. Here, only Palestinians holding a permit to work in Israel or in settlements are vaccinated by Israeli authorities. As a young person and a Palestinian, I can take the vaccine. But at the same time, I think of my father and mother who didn't get it yet. I'll feel better when all of my family members have been vaccinated. Israel aims to vaccinate about 100,000 workers who cross over from the occupied West Bank to Israel every day. The country has faced criticism abroad and at home for not providing vaccines to more of the Palestinian population. Israel's interest is clear. In order to open the economy and return to normal, we need everyone who is moving around inside Israeli borders to be vaccinated and safe. But in the Israeli-occupied West Bank, ordinary people are still waiting for a broader vaccination rollout. In Ramallah, nurse Itoff has only a few vials to administer to her fellow medical colleagues. The Moderna vaccines were part of a one-time delivery by Israel, a small amount, but still seen as a relief for those having to deal closely with patients. We as doctors and nurses are on the front line. I hope that everybody will get vaccinated like this so that we will be protected and have the capability to move on and fight the disease. The Palestinian Authority has received 62,000 coronavirus vaccine doses through the WHO's COVAX program, providing jobs for lower income countries. In February, 10,000 doses of the Sputnik vaccine arrived from the Russian government. However, the Palestinian Authority has come under criticism for the delay in starting a wider vaccination drive. The situation is deteriorating in Palestine, but also, as in several countries around the world, as a result of the late arrival of the vaccines. The discrepancy in administering the vaccines does not bode well in bringing the end of the pandemic any closer. Two thousand doses of the Sputnik vaccines were sent from Ramallah to the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip after Israel approved the transfer. The blockaded territory also received about 60,000 vaccine doses from the United Arab Emirates for a population of two million. And it's crucial. Infection rates in the West Bank have soared in recent weeks. In this private hospital on the outskirts of Ramallah, medical staff have seen a sharp influx of serious COVID-19 cases attributed to virus variants. Until 15 days ago, the corona ward was half empty, and we were emptying the department. Suddenly, the numbers started to increase. Huge numbers started coming to the hospital. Restrictions were tightened once again in the West Bank recently. A curfew on weekends and at night was already in place to curb the pandemic, while the wait for more vaccines continues. Yara Hawari is a Palestinian and senior analyst at the Palestinian Policy Network, Al Shabaha. Just how dire is the situation for Palestinians right now? The situation in the West Bank and Gaza is really, really, really dire. Infections are increasing every day in their thousands. The hospitals really are at 
full capacity and aren't really able to take any more patients in. And so there is a lockdown in an attempt to, to, co to confront this dire situation. But what's even more tragic is that even though there is this lockdown and everything is closed, uh, Palestinians are without work. They're without the possibility of earning money, being able to, to pay for basic uh, food and rent. There aren't any sort of social security measures in place. So the situation really is as dire as it is being reported. I guess that makes it even more important that these vaccines get through to the Palestinians. What is the problem in your opinion? Yeah, and so whilst all health systems around the world are, are struggling, you know, Palestine isn't necessarily an exception in that case. What has to be remembered is that the West Bank and Gaza are confronting the pandemic from a reality of Israeli military occupation. And this has completely weakened the ability of the Palestinian authorities in the West Bank and Gaza um, to respond effectively to the virus. And and I think it's very important that this context of, of military occupation is, is understood. What's happened over the decades is that Israel has deliberately disrupted Palestinian medical capabilities, uh, meaning that they don't even meet the basic standards. Um, this includes, you know, tight restrictions on imports, meaning that there is uh, a constant shortage in equipment, um, in, in, in medications. In Gaza, for example, Gaza constantly operates at uh, zero stock, meaning that there's less than a month's supply. Um, and, and in addition to that, Israel places severe restrictions on Palestinians. So even if they cannot receive medical care within the West Bank or Gaza, and they want to receive medical care elsewhere. They really are at the mercy of the Israeli regime as to whether they receive permits. So this context pre-pandemic was already incredibly challenging. Um, and so you can see that the, the added disaster of COVID um, has only made that situation 100 times worse. Yara, what about the Palestinian Authority taking responsibility for vaccinating its people? So the Palestinian Authority um, is not a representative body. It was created after the Oslo Accords, really as a, as a service provider, as an interim government in waiting for a Palestinian state. That Palestinian state ha has never um, come to fruition. Um, uh, and so it's, this, it's, it's a sort of a limbo body. And they've really not been able to deal with the pandemic effectively, not only because of the Israeli occupation, um, be but because they completely do not have the resources to do so. They are totally uh, out of money. They are dealing with an already uh, depleted healthcare system. Um, and so really what they've, the, the strategies that they've been putting in place is um, on and off lockdowns and hoping that, you know, the vaccine will come soon and, and it hasn't. Well, talking about resources and the vaccine, uh, we have seen this week's first shipment of COVAX vaccines. How significant is that? Yeah, so over the last few days, there has been this uh, reports of this COVAX uh, shipment coming in. Um, uh, but, you know, it's a very, very small batch. It's only about, uh, I think, about 64,000 doses. And we're talking, um, we're talking about a population of 5 million. So it's really, really minute. Uh, we've heard more reports that um, there are supposed to be at least another 100,000 coming uh, uh, from, from China. Um, but this is just really, these are really tidbits um, for a very, very vulnerable population. And there, there is a very stark reality going on that whilst the Palestinian population isn't being vaccinated, um, the, the Israeli population is now over 50% vaccinated. And tell um, me more about that, and, the, the and, geographical reality of that, because what, what does that bring for the Israelis if uh, the Palestinians are not vaccinated? Well, yeah, Palestine isn't unique in the fact that it's, it's not receiving the vaccines fast enough or that its health system isn't able to cope. You know, but the reality of one group of people being vaccinated over another group of people that are under effectively the same governing regime is what makes it particularly stark. What I haven't mentioned yet is that Israel is actually obliged under international law to provide the vaccine to the Palestinian people. The Geneva Convention is very clear in stipulating that, and the Oslo Accords do not trump the Geneva Convention at all. Um, and that is something that's agreed upon by, by many international organizations and the international legal regime. 
regime. So the fact that there is, you know, uh, potentially a healthy young Israeli illegal settler in the West Bank getting vaccinated and just a kilometer away from him, an elderly, vulnerable Palestinian is not able to get the vaccine is a very, very clear manifestation of what many people are calling vaccine apartheid. Obviously, there are problems on the ground between Palestinians and Israelis. What, what about the news of a deal between Austria and Denmark to produce vaccines with Israel? I mean, on a, on a global level, uh, the global cooperation has been a, a huge problem throughout this crisis. Yeah, I think I think there is a huge problem here. There have also been reports that Israel is trying to deal with its surplus supply, possibly selling on its surplus supply. And I think third state uh, countries uh, like Austria or Denmark have to be very, very clear about their responsibilities under international law. They have to be putting pressure on Israel to provide the vaccine for Palestinians. That is their very clear responsibility under international law. And, uh, and failure to do so is complicity. Uh, complicity not only um, in, in Israel's occupation, but complicity in the fact that Palestinians are not able to receive the vaccine. Well, Israel backtracked on those plans to uh, sell surplus vaccine abroad. Uh, what, what are things looking like now? What's the way ahead, do you think? I think the way ahead, uh, the only way ahead is for Israel to provide uh, the vaccine to the people that it occupies, the Palestinian people. Um, and I think the international community has to place a huge amount of pressure on Israel to fulfill those obligations. Because at the end of the day, there isn't anyway a border between Israel and Palestine. Israel subsumes Palestine, it occupies Palestine. There isn't that border and the virus doesn't recognize a border. So at the very least, it's in Israel's own interest to vaccinate the Palestinian population. Dara Hawari, thank you very much for being on the show today. Senior analyst at the Palestinian Policy Network, Al Shabaha. Thank you for having me. And it's that part of the show when Derek Williams answers your questions on the coronavirus. How likely are you to catch COVID-19 outside? For example, from someone running by? For me, one of the most striking aspects of this pandemic is the amount of research that's gone into trying to answer seemingly simple questions like this, which turn out to actually be pretty incredibly complex. I mean, who would have guessed even a year ago that we'd have gotten so obsessed with the highly abstract world of aerosol distribution physics, both in enclosed rooms and outside. Back to the question though, we, we now know that while it certainly might be possible to catch COVID-19 outdoors, it's much, much less likely than it is indoors in poorly ventilated spaces where people spend extended periods of time. That's because unlike outdoors, um, aerosols accumulate in enclosed spaces and increase the chance that you might inhale enough of, of what an infected person has exhaled to catch the disease. Though, though that's an amount I'd like to note, by the way, that we, we still don't know with any certainty. Um, in general, the consensus seems to be that in addition to the indoors-outdoors aspect of the equation, um, the other factors that play major roles in infection are um, how long exposure lasts, uh, how, how close an infected person comes to you, and the amount of time that you're around them. Um, the WHO only recommends masks in outdoor settings where physical distancing can't be maintained, um, like crowds, and not for people doing intense physical activity. That's because pretty much all the indicators point to the conclusion that the jogger panting by you in the park um, just doesn't really present that big of a risk. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and see you again soon.